welcome back to The Late Show. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Folks, my first... My next guest... I was about to say my first guest. My next guest is a writer, director, and one-fifth of the Broken Lizard comedy troupe behind Super Troopers and Beer Fest. He now stars in their new movie, Quasi. Are we really doing this again in my country? They're all my countries. The only reason you're here is so you can horn in on her coronation. And you're only coronating because you don't have the sack to rule this country without your new wife's big army. Please, gentlemen, let's enjoy the feast. Why don't you take your papal supremacy and shove it up your funny hat? I will not sit here and let you take pot shots at my hat! Bring it on, bitch! Uh, did you hear the one about the peanuts who were walking down the street? Stand aside, Kuzma! I got a small thing! Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jay Chandrasekhar. Welcome back. Thank you. How you been? Happy to be here. So good. Yeah? So good. Yeah, I'll fix that. No. Okay. <laughs> The new movie, uh, Quasi, yeah. obviously, as I said, you know, the Super Trooper movies, uh, Beer Fest, this one's a period film. Why, why period for you guys? Well, we were a sketch group to start. Yeah, yeah. And so, How many years now? I mean, uh, we met when we were 19. We started the group when I was 21. So, four. <laughs> four <No>. years. <laughs> no, it's been a while. It's been like 30 years. Wow. So, um, yeah. That's nice. Wow, it's incredible. I mean, you know, it, this we always thought we would sort of be Monty Python, uh, mm -hmm. you know, make movies like that. And so we were doing a lot of sketches. We were wearing wigs and dresses and all these things. And my friend Steve Lemmy was working at the HMV record store back when they had records. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a guy in the jazz section who spoke out of the side of his mouth. And he'd go, another lonely weekend in New York City. <laughs> And Steve would come back and do that imitation, then we would do the imitation, and then we were like, let's make a, a character like that. And then we're like, how can we make him sadder? Let's make him a hunchback, right? So then he was a hunchback. We're like, well, the hunchback lived in, you know, in 16th century France, so we need a king, we need a pope, and eventually we made this political thriller around. Wait, are you telling me that this movie you're making, which is your eighth movie, is from 30 years ago? We wrote, we wrote it. This is one of our oldest scripts, yeah. Wow. I mean, we would we made Super Troopers, which is much more real. And afterwards, you know, we'd have a success, and the studio would get, be like, "What else do you want to make?" And we'd be like, "How about this quasi?" And they'd be like, <laughs> "What else you got?" Uh, How about and, that Super Troopers. <laughs> right. But eventually, Fox Searchlight, which makes a lot of sort of period pieces, yes. they read it and they said, "This is right up our alley." We already have the wardrobes. That's right. <laughs> there is uh, a familiar voice narrating this film at the, the beginning and the end. It's uh, Brian Cox, yeah. who many people now know as Logan Roy from Succession. Um, you work with him in the Super Trooper films. Does he drop as many F-bombs on set as he does as Logan on Succession? Well, look, I, we call him Coxie. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. But Brian Cox, you know, we always like to put a really good actor in our movies so that we kind of look kind of OK, but next to him, you know? Yeah. Uh, he kind of brings us all up. And Brian saw, like, we have a very insult style of friendship. We make fun of each other. It's called the House of Pain, right? We're always making jokes about each other. Yeah. And Brian came in, and he saw that, and he kind of wanted to fit in. And he would just hit us with insults that you're like, that's a little too far, right? <laughs> that's a little too far. I don't get the joke, Brian. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, we made Super Troopers 2, and we're going to make number three. And, you know, he's going to be in gonna it. You are going to make number three? Yeah, we've written when it. When is that yeah. happening? Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna shoot that next. All right. Yeah. Um, you, you grow a mustache, you can hop on the board. You know. <laughs> I got all the time in the world. Okay. So you 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 you, you directed a film called Easter Sunday with a, a comedian uh, Joe, Coy. Joe Coy, and my understanding one of the producing partners of this was Steven Spielberg and his organization, and that you as a director got a note from Steven Spielberg. Two things. One is how does it feel to get a note from Steven Spielberg? as a director, and what was the note? Well, this is Joe Coy's first movie. He's a huge comic. He mm. sells out stadiums. But it was his first movie, right? So and Mr. Spielberg is, is the boss of the movie. He's yes. the executive producer. And so on the first day, Joe is feeling a little insecure. His first day, he's really going to act. And he goes, do you mind if I wear my Dodger hat? Because it makes me feel a little more centered. And I'm like, 
Yeah, sure, no problem. So we shoot this really funny scene. Joe's got the Dodger hat on. And the dailies go down to Burbank. And I get a call from the head of Amblin. And she says, Stephen really likes the scene, but he has one note for you. And I said, what's that? He goes, movie stars don't wear hats. And I was like, oh, OK. Uh, so then I go to Joe Coy. I'm like, hey, pal, we got a note from Mr. Spielberg. It says, movie stars don't wear hats. And he goes, what about Indiana Jones? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess I could go argue with Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> or you could take the hat off in the next scene. And he goes, yeah, yeah, let's take the hat off. So. Did you have to reshoot that scene? No, we okay. did not. Just, just wanted but Steven nobody Spielberg. wore a hat after that. Yeah? I didn't even wear a hat. Nobody's wearing hats. The next note's going to be, movie stars don't wear pants. <laughs> He's just seeing how far he can push Whatever you. he says, I'll do it. I'm in. That's fine. Now, the, the thing, I understand that you um, enjoy adrenaline. Uh, you you heli ski, so which means you go up into like backwoods, like back country in a helicopter, jump out of it and ski down a wild mountain. This sounds dangerous, and why do you enjoy this? I do it. I think I do it because I grew up in like lily white Chicago in the '70s, and I was the only Indian kid around, and I re and I was also the fastest kid in the neighborhood and the fastest, fastest? Kid, yeah, fast kid in my high school, and so I was like that got me a lot of currency. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there's a lot of opinions. Hey, Indians don't ski. And I'm like, you watch me. And so I learned how to ski. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, what's the most advanced version of that? And so I went hella skiing. Mm -hmm. And I got all these notes on my Instagram, like, I didn't know Indians ski. I'm like, yeah, watch me, pal. Wow. They got, they got the Himalayas. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Quasi is available April 20th on Hulu. Jay Chandrasekhar, everybody. We'll be right back.